Hi, here's another one that is uh, a little bit different. I, uh, I'll even show you my solution in a minute. I would have not thought of this uh, in this way, thinking of it as a sum of expected values. I would have built a mass function for the situation and then found out the probability of, I mean, found the expected value of that mass function. So, um, so I'll show you theirs and I've kind of written out the solution and then I'll show you what I was thinking and you can see I just sometimes I just don't think in these ways um, a box contains nine light bulbs so let's change color now let's do it's not a hard decision let's do like this greenish color so let me see a box contains nine, nine light bulbs so here's a Here's a box. I'm actually packing my house right, or my apartment, because I'm moving this week. I just bought a house, so uh, I see a lot of boxes everywhere now. I'm on a box hunt. Anyways, here's a box. It contains nine light bulbs, so these light bulbs are just right in here. Okay, so you get the idea, there's light bulbs and uh, two of them are defective okay so maybe you don't know which one maybe that one's defective and that one and again there's a bunch of other light bulbs in here so two of them are defective what's the expected number of light bulbs that you'll have to keep testing until you find the two defective light bulbs and uh you're pulling them out randomly and without replacement so i mean once you pull one out you test it it's good or bad you don't put it back in the box again so I mean, when I first thought of this problem I'm thinking uh, well hypergeometric because you're sampling without replacement but then kind of a negative binomial because you want to know number of trials to your art success so it's kind of a mixture of those things for me and I'll show you when I build my solution that that's the way I built the mass function but they're gonna do it this way so let i equals 1 through 8 and j is going to be bigger than i so i and j are just indexing variables um, the random variable xij equals j if the ith and jth light bulbs are defective so in other words like um, if the first and fifth are defective then x15 is going to be equal to 5 that means I've had to test 5 bulbs um, right I mean so you're you're gonna start you're gonna test one two three the most you could have to test is all nine of them so for example if you found it on the second and seventh then x two seven is equal to seven that means you had to check seven before you found both defective so that's how they're labeling their random variable there and um, let me see otherwise xij is equal to zero I mean if if um, the first two bulbs are not defective, then x12 is zero. Um, so in essence, then, if you sum up all, over all the xij's, then this is the number of light bulbs to be examined because this is either going to take on the zero, uh, on the value zero or it's going to take on the value j, where j is where you hit your second defective. So expected value is just the sum of all these expected values. So this is every case we could have. For example, um, uh, I want to write it not for like x of uh, 1, 2 plus x of 1, 3 plus x of 1, 4, um, x uh, 1, 9 plus x 2, 3 plus x 2, 4 plus x 2, 9 plus and there's actually 36 of these so um, the expected value of xji is j times uh, 1 divided by 9 choose 2 9 choose 2 is 36 so um, the problem that that the probability that it's going to be x12 or x13 or x14 um, the probability x1j is equal to j is um, one out of 36. I mean, that that's the probability that, I mean, that's the option that holds because every everything else is equally likely. So, uh, I don't I don't know that I'm explaining that very well, but um, this is expected value of xji. Any of the xjis, um, j is the value, and one over 36 is the probability that that value occurs. 
and um, well, maybe it'll make more sense when I show you my solution and uh, so then you can pull this out it's just a constant sum over your J's um, there's a nice formula for this right I want you to sum over your J's and this is going to come out to be about 6.67 so um, that was not intuitive to me the answer how they they did that I mean yeah 6.67 makes sense but the for the way um, I would do the problem let me show you what I ended up doing I think I'll go over to maple too um, Let's just choose a different color. Let's go here. Um, I let x equal uh, number of bulbs needed to check to find two defectives. And x could take on the value 2, 3, all the way up to 9. So I figured, you know, I mean, it, worst case, brute force, I could just write out every probability. It's a little bit painful, but maybe I would see a nice pattern. So p of x is equal to, for example, the first one's easy. The probability x is equal to 2 means you got a defective ball, which is 2 nines. And then you chose the other defective ball, which is 1 eighth. So this is 1 over 36. Probability x is 2, so that was, I thought, pretty nice. What's the probability x is equal to 3? Well, that means in your first two draws, you found at least one defective, and the last thing has to be defective, right? So, um, in the first two draws, so 2 choose 1, you found one defective, so this is a defective, and then, um, let me see, there's seven that aren't defective. And then times, the last one you get is defective, which is one seventh. So two choose one, this this kinda is like a negative binomial, except you're doing it um, without replacement. And then this last guy here is a defective. So notice how nice um, things cancel. So this is gonna be uh, two times one over 36. So x is 2 is 1 over 36, x is 3 is 2 over 36, and you can start to see hmm, maybe there is something nice. So the probability you find it on the fourth one means that you got one defective in your first three draws. So 3 choose 1, 2 ninths times 7 eighths times 6 sevenths. So this is defective, non, and non. And I've accounted that three different ways this could happen. It could have been the first, second, or third. And then the last guy is defective again, so that's one sixth. Notice again, you get this nice canceling. So this is going to be three times one over thirty-six. So pretty much um, p of x, you can see what it's going to be. This is uh, x minus one over thirty-six for x equal to up to nine, and then expected value of x is just the uh, sum of x minus 1 over 36 times x from x equal 2 to 9 and this comes out to be um, whatever it was up there 6.67 so let me let me show you my maple um, it pretty much does exactly what I said I I was playing around at first to make sure I believed it so this is a probability that um, oh I shouldn't have said zero but I do it as quickly as possible in two draws, so two ninths times one eighth. Um, the probability I do it in three draws, so same thing I was just showing you, uh, four draws, five draws, um, x draws in general, you see the, it should be x minus one choose one, you have to find one in the first x minus ones, and the last one was also uh, defective, and then notice every time we just had that two times 72. Um, I sum that. It's legal. I found the expected value. So everything everything is good. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of interesting. Um, just because I don't tend to think of problem solving them going right to expected value. So uh, I think I'll do one more, or at least state something, and then, uh, or just look at it. Maybe Maybe we're done. Let me see.